Now, now, don't have a heart attack. I know this looks crazy and insane and complicated, but it isn't. I made this video so easy that even a kindergartner can understand what's going on. I mean, that's an over-exaggeration, but it's easy. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the heart contraction and relaxation cycle. Now, if you didn't watch any of my videos, prior videos, or you've been living under a rock, or was living on another planet, your heart can contract. Shocker, right? <laughs> your heart contracts a little bit differently than your skeletal and smooth muscle, like the other contractions you went over. You can think about it as a hybrid between those two. And honestly, I think this is easier. So the first thing is I have a little prerequisite for you. If you've not watched my heart electrical pathway video, I highly suggest you watch that first because the first step of this pathway is actually the electrical pathway. So what we're trying to do, the goal is we're trying to contract the heart, either the atrium or the ventricles, the atria or the ventricles. That's our goal. And how we do that is with calcium. All we're trying to do is trying to get calcium into the cell to cause a contraction. That's our goal. Now, the very first step is the heart electrical pathway generates an action potential. So in this heart electrical pathway video I made, we went over that the SA node makes the electrical signal. And it basically travels along the heart everywhere, you know, throughout the heart. So what I'm talking about is the SA node is fired and created some kind of action potential. And we're talking about any of the muscle cells anywhere around the heart. This pertains to any cell that's a muscle cell in the heart that would just received an electrical signal from the SA node. So the heart electrical pathway generates an action potential. And now is, has now reached the muscle cell of the heart. Any of the cells on the heart that's a muscle cell, it just, it just received it. This will cause something called L-type calcium channels to open. Okay? They are called L-type calcium channels. I do not know why it's L-type. They just named it like that. Because who knows why? Physiology just has to be difficult like that. <laughs> so calcium rushes into the muscle cell. Okay. Now the L-type calcium channel has this ball and chain kind of deal. So when not exposed to electrical potential, the ball basically closes the channel. So no calcium can actually go in. But since we've been exposed to electrical signal, electrical activity, the ball basically goes away and calcium can go inside. Simple, right? Now, the calcium influx causes renodine receptors on the circle plasma reticulum to open. So in previous videos, I mentioned that circle plasma reticulum is an organelle in the muscle cell. And all it does is it's a calcium storage center. It holds calcium inside of it. It's think about like a container. And that inside that container is just a lot of calcium inside of it. Renodine receptors block the container. It's like the lid of a container. That's what renodine receptors are. It's just the lid. So calcium cannot leave the sarcoplasma reticulum. The lid is shut. But when calcium rushes in, right, from the action potential, it causes renodine receptors to open. Renodine receptors is this pink thing. It also has that ball and chain kind of deal. So now the renodine receptors is open. So now calcium can leave the sarcoplasm reticulum and join the sarcoplasm or basically the cytoplasm of the muscle cell. It's free. Now calcium can bind to, to troponin and push tropomyosin out of the way, just like skeletal muscles, exactly the same. So calcium binds to troponin and pushes tropomyosin out of the way, which initiates the contraction. That's it. 
That's literally heart contraction cycle right there. Well, that's the contraction, not the cycle, but that's how contractions happen. Now, to relax the cell, calcium leaves troponin, relaxing the muscle. So calcium says, all right, I'm done, and leaves troponin. Now, there's something called the circa pump on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, our container. Think about like it's another lid on the container, or it's like a side port on the container, if those exist. Never seen one, but just pretend. What the circa pump does, it uses ATP and takes calcium and shoves it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, remember there's calcium inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Not all of it left. There's a high amount of calcium inside. So by properties of diffusion, calcium does not want to go inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum because there's already too much inside of it. So we need ATP to do so. So there's a circa pump that takes this calcium, uses ATP, and shoves it back inside. Okay, and it's locked in there. That's it. No, not all the calcium gets shoved inside. Some calcium is still in the sarcoplasm. So what happens is we're trying to reduce the mem membrane voltage, right? Because remember, if the voltage is too high, then we're going to get a contraction. And we're going to do all of this left-hand stuff all over again. So we're really trying to reduce the voltage of the muscle cell. That's our goal. So there's something called the sodium calcium exchanger. It's a pump. And what it does is, see, calcium does not want to go outside willingly. It does not want to do that. So what's going to happen is that sodium does want to come inside because of diffusion, of concentration gradient. There's not that much sodium inside the cell. There's a lot outside the cell. So what's going to happen is that sodium's like, hey, I want to go inside. I'm going to give you my concentration energy to calcium so you can go outside. So what's really kind of happening, think about this, is that the sodium goes inside. And basically, that driving force powers this pump, the sodium-calcium exchanger pump. And it powers up this pump. And it basically says, hey, calcium, now you can go outside. I'm going to force you outside now. No ATP needed. Usually you would need ATP for this, but no ATP involved. Because it's using the sodium gradient to go outside. So now calcium goes outside. Sodium goes inside. But you're probably like, wait a second, sodium is positively charged. Didn't we just raise the membrane potential? Well, first off, remember that calcium is, pos is positively charged but has a 2 plus. Sodium is positively charged but only has a 1 plus, only 1 plus, right? So we're pumping out 2 pluses. So 2 pluses go outside and 1 go inside. So technically, we are actually lowering the voltage. But in addition, we're going to use the sodium potassium pump and pump out three sodiums outside and two potassiums inside to even lower the voltage of the muscle cell. Because we're really trying to get as low as possible so we don't get a contraction. We really try to relax our muscle cell. Okay. And just a side note here is that this L-type calcium channel is closed because the voltage is not high enough. Right, we're lower the voltage. This is literally the contraction cycle. This is it, the contraction relax relaxation cycle. Yeah. I tried to make this as easy as possible. So you probably see on your PowerPoint slides from your professor that they made a huge song and dance about this and made it really difficult. I tried to make it as simple as possible in nine steps. And hopefully these steps are easy. This may be confusing, but honestly, just listen, like, go over it slowly. Don't try to rush through this. Try to make sense of what's happening. Because if anything, to be honest, 
this contraction cycle makes more much more sense than skeletal and smooth muscle contraction cycle. Like it actually makes sense what's happening. No MLCK crap, no MLCP, none, none of that. Okay? Not none of that. No calmodulin, no caldesmin, none of that. It's just calcium and troponin, tropomycin, you know, the usual stuff. That's it. And action potentials. That's it. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And until next time, later.